Today on Culture Express, Louis visits Dr. Joseph Palico, an Indian Christian pastor at St. Stan's Catholic Church in Masbeth, Queens. Louis learns about the ancient language and liturgies sang in Aramaic, the language that was once spoken by Jesus Christ and his apostles. Hi, Louis Gasparro here, Queens Public Television. We are in St. Stan's in Maspeth with Reverend Joseph Palico. Reverend, how are you? It's nice great to be here. You. Very good to be Tell here with you. Tell us a little bit about your travels, your musicologist, you just came back, you, you have all of this footage on Aramaic chants. Yes. Please fill us all in. Yes. Um, I belong to an ancient Christian community in India that is referred to as St. Thomas Christians. Our forefathers believe that St. Thomas the Apostle came to the southern part of India, which is now called Kerala, and preached the gospel. And our forefathers received the faith from the very source, from the Apostle. And uh, so probably he spoke in Aramaic, that was his mother tongue at the time. And uh, he established small Christian communities there. Later in the fourth century, there was an immigration of Christians from Persia, present uh, day Iran, Iraq area. It seems they were persecuted there and they came to Kerala on the southwest coast of India. And they brought Syriac, which is same as Aramaic, which is like a dialect of Aramaic, and uh, the liturgy in uh, the in the Syriac language. So from then onwards, at least we had a strong Aramaic Syriac uh, Christian liturgy in that part of the world. And uh, so when I was a young boy, I served mass in Syriac. Wow. Yes, we would write the text in Malayalam script, the local script, right. but the text is Syriac. Awundu Vashmaya, Naskandu Shmag, Tese Malkusag, that is the is our, Aramaic? Uh, Aramaic, our wow. father. Probably the exact words that Jesus spoke to That's his amazing. disciples. I was reading that the people that you went and met in India were very surprised that they were remembered, they were afraid that they were forgotten. How was that experience for you? That was the best experience that I had. I'm glad you asked that question. Some of the senior priests who breathed this language, who sang in this language, in 1962, this is before the Vatican II, uh, liturgy was translated into the vernacular. Until then, the liturgy was in Aramaic, in Syriac. In 1962, they decided because Syriac literacy, literacy was going down, people did not know the language that right. much, and so they decided to change the text into translate the text into the vernacular. So those who were born before that, those who were adults in 1962, slowly, slowly found that their knowledge of the language and uh, the liturgical traditions and the melodies were not useful because nobody asked them. So they were surprised that someone from someone who is born and brought up in Kerala but went to America, now is coming back in search of this golden treasure that I would yes. consider. And they consider those melodies and memories as golden treasures. And it would have, di it would, it would have died with them if someone didn't ask. The Hindu and Christian communities cooperated with each other in many aspects of day-to-day -day life. Even the architecture of many of the churches resembled that of the Hindu temples. In the traditional caste hierarchy, the Christians enjoyed upper status. They were accorded 72 privileges, 
similar to those of the aristocratic classes. Is there any, uh, are there any instruments within the music or it's all vocal? Yes, <clears throat> interesting question. So far as we know, until the 16th century, we didn't use musical instruments. Or all if vocal. we used, we don't, we are not sure. It must have been, as we call, unaccompanied a cappella style, right, right, style right. of singing. All vocal. Or vocal. Laril nidra yunar nangi Pavan sannidhi anayunnu Kartave nin karunakyar Nanni paranyu namikyunnu In music iconography, on the churches built early, we see a few musical instruments that are not western. The, that has to be studied. Mm. Some of your listeners, uh, some of your viewers yeah, yeah, of this yeah. program should check that out and go and look at the shape and size of these musical instruments and, and for study them because they may, they may be precursors right. of some of the musical instruments right. in, uh, in, in West Asia, in the Middle East. <laughs> Coming back to your question, in the sixth, when the Portuguese missionaries came, Vasco da Gama came to Kerala. He came three times. He died in Kerala. He was buried in Kerala. Later, his uh, remains were transferred to Portugal. Wow, I didn't know that. Yes, he died on his third trip. He died in Kerala and was buried there. So, and they, later Portuguese missionaries came. They brought like violin, mm -hmm. uh, drum, right. uh, triangle. So in some of the recordings, some of the songs that were recorded and are on YouTube under the Aramaic project uh, uses those in it. And harmonium. Yes. You have an idea what is har yes. harmonium is a um, hand pumped... Uh, There's also key. one that has a crank on it. Yes, yes. It's a very, like a, it's a drone kind of a no, no, you can, no, no, you can play the notes. Oh, really? It is a keyboard. Oh wow, the yes. harmonium I know about has a crank yes. on it. it, plays like notes, but it's only like a drone of the notes. It's no, you play no, no, you can play the whole mm. scale. Sadhanam Pavanam Pavanam Jeeva Sadhanam Pavanam Bhavanam Jeeva Sadhanam Sarvashobhanam 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 Pavanam Bhavanam Jeeva Sadhanam How many people in the world would you say speak Aramaic? That is a tough question. Is it in the millions or...? Oh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. There are two aspects to it. The question that you asked is how many people speak the language? That is one question. How many people use the language right. is a different question. Right. So you're, first, you're questioning how many people speak the language. There is a place in Syria called Malula. Mm -hmm. That place was in the news uh, a few months ago because right. that place was bombed. Right. The communities there, they were like geographically secluded. They used to keep, they, they say, the scholars say, they speak Aramaic language without being influenced by the Arabic. Right. Because in the, in the Middle East after 7th century, you know, this language got right. superseded. Yeah. So, 
very few people probably speak this language in the world. Right, the way we're speaking English. Right exactly. Now. How many people know how to speak it? That too, very limited. Really? But how many people use the language mm -hmm. is a different question. How many people use it? I cannot give a number, but in India there are still people who use this language in the liturgy. Later I, I'm going to sing for you. Uh, in this. That would be great. <laughs> so, my knowledge of the language is through the chants. And my doctoral dissertation was about this chants. That's why I am passionate about it. And that's how I came to this Aramaic project because if we don't do anything right now, it gets right lost. now it will be lost. Right in front of our eyes, it is being lost from several communities. And my community, called the Syro Malabar Church, is one such community where the language is dying out. Right. So many melodies. So if we don't do this now, it will be lost. It is like, what shall I compare it to? It is like a species of bird, or a species of animal, or a species of plant is just dying, getting extinct right. in and your sight. people side. know about it in their letter. Right. Let it go. Right. It's like you're an archaeologist and you are digging up this ancient yes. knowledge and ancient music and beauty, which, because I think music is beautiful. Yes, oh yes. And you're, you're saying, hey, look, you know, we have this here and you have the support of your church, which yeah. is tremendous. Yes. I, I'm going to sing a melody. Uh, the roots, I don't Go know. Ahead. Well, it could be in the Middle East or it could be in India. Baramariyam. Barmariyam Barhalaha Dyeldas Mariyam I have no idea where this melody is. <laughs> this is what I mean. That was, that was beautiful. And you're actually saying words. Yes. In Aramaic. I will tell you what are the, the words. words. Bar Mariyam. Bar is son, Maryam is Mary. You will hear right. that name among the Arabs mm -hmm. and the Jewish people, still Maryam or Miriam. It is the same, Maryam, Mary. Bar Maryam, Bar Maryam, son of Mary, son of Mary. Bar Alaha, Alaha is God. This Alaha became Allah, it is the same God. It's a derivative of that. Uh, yes, right? exactly, slight change in the pronunciation. Bar Alaha, son of God. Uh, Bar Mariam, Bar Mariam, Bar Alaha, the eldest Mariam. Uh, the, the Son of God was born from Mariam. Mary gave birth to the Son of God. That was that whole chant? Yes. Maria, Bar Maria, Bar gone through modifications if it came from the Middle East it may have gone through modifications in India mm -hmm. the vocal inflection with which I sang is Indian right but the melody could be Middle Eastern Middle Eastern yeah you know it, 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 it sounds minor yes it's <clears throat> minor uh, scales yeah um, and you have such a great Acoustic, yeah, yeah, where yes. it, it really resonates, resonates, you, you yes. resonates, and you hear the full warmth. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I think it's tremendous. I think yeah. it's great. I've never met anyone that, <laughs> you know, when Lu when Lucia brought this to my attention, I was like, really? That's that's really cool. I like yes. that. Um, I'm sure that there's going to be plenty of people that are going to be interested in it because it's just beautiful. You know, the sound of it is beautiful. What you're saying yes. is beautiful. Yes. Um, you got a lot of support behind you. I wish you the best of luck. That was Father Joseph Palico. We'll be right back. Culture Express. Martho men and maya lundu turengundu Nanai varena me inna 